Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing after lunch session? It's a little more energy here. Come on, guys. Uh, my name is Amit. That's better. Uh, my name is Amit. I am a, a machine learning slash AI evangelist uh, based out of New York, the greatest city in the world. Um, that, that's right. Uh, I just said it. Um, but I'm here not to talk about New York or the rivalry between New York and San Francisco, but really talk about how uh, we at Amazon Alexa are using AI and machine learning techniques uh, to build uh, natural voice interfaces that hopefully some of you used this morning before coming here. Uh, show of hands, how many of you have an Echo or an Alexa device at home? Excellent. All right, so let's, let's talk about how we are actually doing this. And before we get there, let's talk about why are we even doing voice at all. Like, why voice? Uh, we obviously believe that voice is the next big uh, jump that we will see in, uh, in how we actually use computers and how we actually interact with technology. Um, and we believe that it's providing uh, that, that kind of jump because it's the most natural interface, most natural uh, interface that we've actually ever invented. There's no learning that we have to do. You just talk, and things start to happen. Which, if you think about it, uh, that is the vision uh, that we started off when we started building devices like Echo back in 2014. Uh, the, the vision that we had was to, believe it or not, build a Star Trek kind of computer where you could just talk, uh, and the computer responds in an intelligent fashion. And recently, to complete that analogy, we introduced uh, the computer wake word. So if you have an Echo device, you could actually say computer, and it would wake up. So instead of using Alexa, you could do things like that. But the point was that you can actually talk to these computers using natural voice interface, and the computer should respond back in an intelligent fashion. And since then, we've obviously launched more devices, but the idea is still the same. All of these devices have microphone and speakers on them, so you can actually talk, uh, and it can respond back uh, through the speakers. Uh, so we talked about the devices, but these devices are really the endpoints, the real magic that's happening, all of the analysis, all of the speech recognition, and all of the natural language understanding uh, that Ben mentioned earlier. Uh, with Alexa, that's all happening in the cloud. Uh, so it's, I'll talk, talk about some of the challenges uh, that we are solving by uh, using machine learning and AI in the cloud. But it's important to understand that when you actually talk to Alexa, there's very little that's happening on the device itself. There's obviously few pieces of software that's running on the device. Uh, for example, the wake word engine. Uh, so when you say Alexa, it's lis listening for the word Alexa, and nothing is getting streamed up to the cloud just yet. So when uh, the Echo device hears the word Alexa, that's when the microphone uh, opens up and it starts to stream your uh, voice up uh, to the cloud. Uh, so this is what the interaction really looks like. You have, uh, if you got up this morning and you asked Alexa for the weather, uh, your audio was actually just captured on the device, and it transfers that to uh, Alexa, which is sitting in the cloud. The speech recognition, all of that magic is happening in the cloud. Now, since I asked for the weather, Alexa figures out what the intent was. In this case, I just wanted to get the weather information. So it figures out what skill or what capability or what app, if you may, it needs to transfer that request to. The weather skill responds back with, oh, weather is nice and sunny in San Francisco uh, in text format. And that text format is then finally converted back into speech and then it, and it's sent back to the audio. So be, bear in mind that all of this is happening in just fractions of a second uh, without the user realizing that this whole transaction actually went into the cloud and then came back, which is really important for these natural voice interfaces. You don't want people to think, uh, like if I'm talking to you and if I give a pause, that was just about three seconds, right? But imagine if this is longer. Uh, those are not the kinds of situations that people want. Uh, and that's uh, when you're building uh, voice interfaces, you want to make sure that that uh, transaction is really quick uh, and fast. So let's talk about how we are using AI. Now, when I was starting off with AI, uh, I don't know about you guys, depending on how deeply involved you guys are with AI right now, but I was completely thrown off by the buzzwords that were out there in the industry. And these three buzzwords just were used almost interchangeably, given the, the giving me the perception that they're the same, but it turns out they're not. So the first one is the artificial intelligence, which is really the science. It's a broad science of building machines that can actually do things that would normally require human-level intelligence. So it's really the broad study. Uh, is what AI is. Uh, and one of the ways that we've been working on the AI is called machine learning which is really, can we actually throw a lot of data and some algorithms at these machines and have them learn by themselves? 
So imagine you have your email filters. So there's two ways to actually filter out the spam. One is that you go in there and you create some basic filter rules, which is what we were, we were doing before Gmail uh, kicked in with their uh, ultra awesome uh, spam filters. You would actually say, oh, if it's coming from this, that's a spam. If it includes the word Nigeria, it's a spam. But that's really not scalable. So the approach that we took now is using machine learning, so you just Machines figure out, oh, these are the patterns, and I can actually learn from these patterns, and I can predict that this email is a spam email. So some of those techniques uh, are what machine learning is. And then finally, deep learning is just one of the techniques within machine learning that has been uh, pr providing some really good results in the last decade or so. Uh, and those are some of the techniques that we also use uh, to improve Alexa uh, as a voice uh, interface. So let's quickly talk about the conversational AI challenges that we ran into uh, that, uh, while building uh, Alexa. So one of the first things, like I mentioned, is wake word detection. There's obviously so much noise and so much uh, voice interactions happening around the device that the device needs to be able to pick up when Alexa was said. Uh, so we have a bunch of algorithms which clean out the noise, which clean out the noise uh, reduction uh, algorithms, and we have some beamforming, which is really uh, the Echo device, for instance, has seven microphones on top of it, and it can figure out where the sound energy is coming from, and it mutes out the other microphones and concentrates on the beam uh, of energy, that uh, the sound energy where it's coming from. So we, we are using a little bit of algorithmic uh, uh, science on the device itself to figure out the uh, wake word. So again, uh, this is where uh, all of this has to happen on the device, because at this point, the device is not streaming yet. So whatever compute uh, is available on the device, we need to be able to use that without having the capability to actually send it off to the, to the cloud. So this part is all being done on the device. And the next one is automatic speech recognition, which is really straightforward at this point, uh, really taking what the user said in speech audio and converting that into discrete English words, right? I mean, even our cell phones do a pretty decent job at that. Um, and so all of that, the speech recognition, is actually happening in the cloud. So when the speech audio is sent off to the cloud, Alexa figures out what was said. It converts those phonemes that it translates into uh, into discrete English words. So it, if you say something like 40 times, this is what it is translated into using the ASR. This is really cool, except that what does it really mean? Does it mean 40 times? Or does it mean 40 times? Or does it mean for golf tee times? Or does it mean for golf tee times? Right? At this point, the ASR has done its job, but we still don't know what the user really meant. And this is where we'd run into the third challenge, which is the natural language understanding, which is really understanding the intent or the context behind what the user was saying. So we solve that, among other ways, we solve that by, if you're creating a skill for Alexa, for instance, you provide some training data. Now, this is the same machine learning data that you would throw at any other machine learning, a machine learner. Uh, you provide some data, and you provide some algorithm, and the, the machine just learns on its own. So as you use Alexa, the more you use Alexa on a daily basis, the better she gets. Uh, it, she learns from your speech preferences, from your accents, from your patterns, from the kind of skills you're using. All of that data is being thrown at these learners, and they're learning from this training data that's becoming available. And then, like I said, when you get the response back from the skill, when you ask Alexa for a joke, it comes back in text format to the Alexa uh, speech engine that's sitting in the cloud. And then before it reaches back to the user, it needs to be converted back into speech. So that's where the final challenge uh, in text-to-speech comes into the picture, where we figure out how we can actually uh, convert that uh, into speech so the developer does not have to worry about any of these things. So like, as you can see, like building for speech or building voice is hard. There's so many challenges that you have to solve. And we do build, what we are trying to do with Alexa is to actually package all of this together so you don't have to worry about uh, dealing with all of these challenges, uh, we can actually handle all of that for you. So again here, uh, text-to-speech uh, is handled in the cloud and then sent back to the device. So the speech recognition, the natural language understanding, all of the machine learning is all happening in the cloud. And we've packaged this together into what we call the Alexa Skills Kit. How, how many of you are developers have played around with Alexa Skills Kit? 
Excellent. Uh, so Alexa Skills Kit is really a way that you can actually bring your product or service uh, onto the Alexa voice platform. So for example, if you're an Uber or you are a Lyft or you have any other product or service that's already existing and you want to bring that into the voice platform, you can actually use Alexa Skills Kit, which is a bunch of APIs. We have SDKs available in Python and JavaScript, and you can bring that uh, into uh, Alexa. So next time I can just say, Alexa, ask my skill uh, to do X, Y, Z. But then there's the other side also. Uh, sorry, so you can build things like Starbucks. So Starbucks recently launched a skill, uh, and then Ford uh, also is integrating Alexa into their cars. So imagine a scenario where you could be in your car and you could say, Alexa, ask, my, ask Starbucks to start my order. So by the time you're driving and you can get to the uh, Starbucks store, your order is ready. And that is made possible by what we call the Alexa voice service, which is really packaging all of the power and the personality that Alexa offers on all of these devices into any other device. As long as the device has a microphone, a speaker, and some kind of internet connection, you can actually package Alexa and take it into that platform also. So imagine that you have a micro microwave or a fridge in your house, and those are all uh, Alexa enabled. So these are some of the highlights that we had uh, from uh, CES. So as you can say, see, from robots to cars to anything that, that you can imagine uh, would have uh, some kind of voice and internet connection, you can actually build that uh, with Alexa. Right, that's all I had. Um, I will be available after this for questions. Uh, my Twitter handle is Amit, so uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>